Hello, everybody. Welcome on the Light Zone Data Show. Today, we have the pleasure of hosting Monica Royal. And she's going to address a very important topic that we should all be concerned about, data security. Welcome, Monica. Hello, hello, George. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very excited about this data security topic. So am I. And uh, you have such a, a depth of knowledge in so many areas. And there you go. Also data security. So tell us a little bit about your background and how come you're knowledgeable in this area as well? Yes. So I actually started my career as an IT auditor. That's an information technology auditor. So I was responsible for reviewing the processes and systems within a company to make sure that they operated as intended, like they're supposed to meeting all of the compliance regulations and to make sure that they were secure. Any organization needs to have a Monica on their team for sure. If it's not already out there, the information, what is data security? What do we mean when we're talking about data security? Yeah, basically data security is all about protecting the company from unauthorized access, loss, disclosure, corruption, and set oh, any information that something leaves unintentionally. And the way that to do that is to basically develop some procedures with those security tips to everybody in the company that needs to adhere to, to keep that data safe. I usually ask, why should we care? But I feel that in this case, it's pretty obvious. So I'm going to reward a little bit. The question is, and it feels as an employee, we come under the assumption that, okay, yeah, yes, this is a problem. We should care about it. The company is doing something with it. Should we as employees care about it? Absolutely. It's actually every single employee that works for a company, it's your responsibility to keep the data within that company mm -hmm. safe, which is why I really think that I want to start sharing more about this data security with the data community. A lot of us data scientists, data analysts, engineers, all of us data professionals use data. And so we need to make sure how to make that secure and safe. So data security is not a company problem. It's everybody's problem. Absolutely. Everyone. I think somebody was saying that there's all these technologies and using AI to identify different threats and everything. But in the end, the weakest link is that human being. So we all need to pay attention to it. It is. In fact, actually, internal threats are the most, um, internal threats pose the most risk to companies. So it's that rather be people with intentional ways to expose the company, mm -hmm. say like in a disgruntled employee, but more, more importantly, people that do it unintentionally. So people that aren't aware of things like social engineering or even like mm -hmm. phishing emails. So they'll open up an email and they won't even know something like malware will be installed. And then the hacker just has access to the company's information. Yeah. And we've seen a rise in those phishing attempts since COVID started. And apparently on a yearly basis, there's an increase from the previous year. So there's more and more, I think the average organization really per month, they're having to deal with over 2 million phishing attempts that are directed at their staff. And of course, a lot of companies have controls in place to make sure a lot of this is filtered out and never reaches the inbox of their employees, but of course, some make their way through and uh, becoming more educated and how to identify phishing attempts is crucial. Yeah. And a lot of cybersecurity departments at different companies have phishing campaigns. So mm. that's something that I've been part of. I've written emails, sent out emails, and then structured security awareness training around this is what you need to look for in an email. Don't click on links. If it's misspelled, definitely be wary of that. Although mm -hmm. though emails have been getting more experience, so you see less of those like mistakes and misspellings yeah. and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, I've noticed that too. And But you know what? I, I was always wondering, how come there are mistakes in this? And wouldn't somebody review it and make sure they're error free and it looks more religious? Just put some effort into it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like now we need to go into those best practices and, and tips and recommendations on what companies should do, individuals should do. And I think you've touched on one that we need that awareness campaign, that training campaign, 
even running our own mockups, if that's at all possible to send out fake phishing attempts to educate our colleagues, but also understand if this were a real phishing attempt, what's the hit that the organization would take? Exactly. And another thing that you can make people aware of is something called social engineering. That's when somebody like gets you on the phone and says, Hey, I know your CEO. I have a question for him. Can you give me his phone number? Or they'll try to get something out of you. And then that just goes layers and layers deep, depending on how far they can get with that gathering of data. Oh, I can imagine. Plus everything that we put on social media alone, there could be some stuff that's re revealing even about our, our work life that might not become apparent, but for somebody that's meant to target you, they can probably find a lot of useful information for them to, yeah, just use in nefarious ways. Exactly. So they'll call up a company and they know who the CEO is because of LinkedIn and then they'll name drop and say, mm. Hey, I know I need George's phone number and then it just spirals from there, depending on if people fall for it. Any other tips and tricks that you'd like to share? Yeah. One thing to secure your digital assets is to create really strong passwords. So on the company side, you can configure a system for a certain character, like you need a special character and a number and all of that. But it's one thing to just have password one, two, three dollar sign, <laughs> right? It technically meets all of those requirements mm -hmm. they set in that system, but that can easily be hacked. So think about using a passphrase. So like mm. a sentence that maybe doesn't even make sense to anybody but yourself. Those ones are the best. Yeah, I heard that's even better than having a whole set of gibberish in terms of special characters and numbers and everything, the passphrase mm -hmm. seems to be even more secure than that. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm often surprised sometimes, right? For personal reasons, you got to log into all these different service accounts, like insurance comes to mind. I'm not going to name the companies that I'm, I've encountered this with, but I'm surprised when I, whenever I need to choose the password to sign up for some of these services and for some that you think, okay, you need to have some really high standards of security. They're mentioning, sorry, we don't accept special characters or sorry, your password can only be eight characters long and things like that. Limitations that I feel like, hey, you're not allowing me to make my credentials be very secure. Yeah. And I find that a little odd as well, especially when they limit like what special characters you can use. Because there could be a way for that threat actor to get those configurations right. and then they better define their hacking right. abilities to get the password. Right. Um, yeah. Do you have any uh, horror stories that you're aware of that you can share? Um, related to passwords in particular, yes. So as when I was doing IT auditing, we would do excursions throughout the office. And so we would just look around people's desks and see if there were any like confidential paperwork lying out in the open. And one thing that I saw was that there would be passwords written on sticky notes, just right there on the monitor wow. or under the keyboard. And if, if somebody breaks into your office, then they could easily just log into your wow. computer. Well, we used to have an IT director at my old job and uh, he was going through this campaign to teach people, hey, lock your workstation before you're just going on your break or whatever to talk to a colleague. And even if it's just for a couple of minutes, get into the habit of locking your station because things can happen. And whenever he would find that that's not happening, he would actually walk around, go to that person's desk. And he had this like USB drive where he had the, just a wallpaper kind of already ready to go, <laughs> which is big letters change, lock your station. And he would change their role. People would that just bring awareness and uh, it worked. Yes. We used to do that too. And we used to turn people's desktops upside down. Ah. So then while you're trying to like navigate, it's Even all better. opposite. Yeah. We did some pretty funny stuff. Even better. Yeah. We got to take that away. <laughs> yes. So Monica, for those that want to get into this field. I don't even know where to start. Is there some sort of a career trajectory? Are there resources that you recommend people to go to and study from? Where do you start? Yes. So 
I would start by joining different communities. One of my favorites is ISACA. It's I-S-A-C-A. And they have all kinds of security and audit trainings and career advice certificates and such. And then also think about looking into cybersecurity itself. There's a resource called Cybrary, which mm. is similar to a plural site or another MOOC where they have courses. Again, they also have trainings and career development. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the Lights on Data show with us today yes. and putting the lights on this very important topic. And I do encourage everybody to follow Monica on LinkedIn, not just for the upcoming data security post that she's going to do, but a bunch of wonderful content that she sheds a lot of light on and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, nerd nourishment, if you will.